Hey people, I'm Valentin and in today's video I will show you an amazing technique on creating those beautiful sequential repeater animations. It's a bit of a follow-up tutorial on last week's video where we created those beautiful geometric circle animations. So if you haven't watched it yet, just pause this video right here and click here to quickly watch it. It's worth it. And now that you've watched it, let's dive right into After Effects. Right here you can see the animation that we created in last week's tutorial, except for one little difference and that is uh, that kind of sequential scaling up animation of each of those repetitions, um, each of those squares you could almost say. It actually isn't that complicated. Just try and stay focused and in the end you will have this one null object with which you can control everything and actually keyframe the whole animation however you want to and control this whole thing. So let's get started and create a new composition. Uh, I will just leave it as it is, 1920 by 1080 and 24 frames per second. I will add a solid as a background, just white background, and double click on the shape uh, tool as we did in the last episode, but this time it's a rectangle and I'm going to go down to rectangle path and actually change it to 100 by 100 to have a nice little square. And I'm not going to care too much about the color yet because we're actually going to use a very neat trick using expressions to color all of these squares as you can see in this example that I showed you before. And this shape layer I'm going to rename it uh, iteration 1 because remember always name your stuff and I'm going to select the white solid and click option control shift and Y to create a null object and going to add a slider control, double clicking it from, from effects and pre presets. And this first one I'm going to call individual scale, uh, which will basically control the scale of each of those iterations of squares. I'm going to duplicate this one and call it individual rota uh, rotation. And another one for spacing, which is going to determine how far those squares will be apart from in the end. And you will be able to animate all of those things however you want to at any time. So we're going to toggle your lock and uh, go up into iteration one and option click the size property. I'm going to take the pick whip and select individual scale. So now it's gonna be at zero. I'm just going to drag this up to 100 and then I'm going to do the same for the rotation. Just option click the rotation, take the pick whip, drag it to individual rotation. And now I can yeah, rotate it however I want to just using this null object. So in order for you to understand, on the first layer we will have just the first square. On the second layer we will have the next 8 squares. On the next one we will have the next 16 and so on. And all of those animations, the scale as well as rotation, should be sequential. So these 8 squares should follow a few frames after that square. And the next 16 should follow a few frames after the 8 prior. But of course, I want to avoid duplicating that layer many times, having a lot of keyframes and just dragging them a few frames apart on each layer and then in the end not being able to control anything. But I want to automate this kind of staggering effect. And there's actually a quite easy expression for this. So let's say we're going to animate the individual scale from the beginning, which will be 0 to 1 second where it will be 100 and I'm going to end uh, the composition somewhere at 2 seconds, then this is going to happen from 0 to 1 second. But if on the end of the first line I'm going to type in value at time, that basically says that uh, this property will have this number at time. And now I have an open bracket so I can type in time. So at each given time, this property will be exactly the same as this one is right now. Don't worry, if you didn't understand this, I'm going to subtract one from this bracket just in order to show you. And now you will see that the scaling animation will happen exactly one second after these keyframes. And this way we can actually stagger the animation by subtracting not one, but index and the index is actually this little number over here, which is the layer index, which changes 
with each duplicate. So this first layer has the index 1, the second layer has the index 2 and so on. But as our index equals 1 and this time function right here uses seconds, one second is way too much for each repetition. So I'm going to divide this by 20. And now if I duplicate this layer a couple of times, uh, you might think, yeah, nothing happened now, but that is just because this layer is on top. But if I actually select the layers below, you can see that each one is just a few frames, maybe one or two frames behind the other one, which is exactly the effect that we want to achieve. Um, so I'm just going to copy this dot value at time right here and going to paste it onto the rotation as well. But for the rotation, I'm actually going to divide it by 10 because for the rotation, I want even a bit more of an of this offset effect. As you can see right here for the rotation, it just looks great if there's even more space in between, maybe three or four frames. And now for you to imagine the next layer will be those eight squares, but we don't want the one square in the middle. And for that, this is gonna be a bit more complicated. So I'm going to have to duplicate this layer twice. I'm gonna hide the first iteration, drag the second one below and the third one below the second one, just not to get messed up with those, those index numbers. Um, because After Effects, when you duplicate something, when you duplicate a layer, it duplicates it above, but the index goes from uh, one to five, top to bottom. So anyway, the iteration two, I'm actually gonna call mat one and the iteration three, I'm gonna call iteration two because this layer is actually gonna be the one with our eight squares or actually nine squares. And the mat layer is going to be this first square. And then we're going to alpha invert the iteration two from our mat layer. But you will see what I mean in a second if you don't understand it right now, don't worry. So I'm going to hide this mat layer. I'm going to go down iteration two, go down to contents, and now it's gonna get exciting because we're gonna add a repeater. And uh, for this repeater, three copies is all right because we want a grid that is three by three and offset should be minus one, right? And the same goes for the Y axis. So. I'm going to go down to transform and change it to zero by 100. Now we have this grid three by three. Let's say I duplicate those two layers, the iteration and mat, which we're both going to need for each duplicate. I'm going to drag it below and uh, actually change the color to something different. And then go down and change those repeaters. Uh, we should change them to five by minus two to create the next row. And the same for the other repeater, which will be five by minus two. But of course, each time when I duplicate these layers, I don't want to change it manually like I did just now. That was just for showing you the concept. But rather, I want to create an expression to automate that whole process, which is actually quite easy. So I'm going to go down to repeater number one and uh, the copy should be three. But guess what? The index is also three. And if I duplicate it, it will be five. So I'm just going to option click the copies uh, drag it onto this layer, type dot index, and voila. And for the offset, I will option click and actually type in minus 0.5 times this layer dot index. Actually, you need to put an asterisk in between here um, to multiply it. And then this will be minus 1.5, but we want it to be minus one. So type in plus 0.5. All right, and now I can actually go ahead, select both of these properties, uh, right click copy expression only, and just select repeater and paste them on there. So now if I duplicate those two layers and drag them below, you will see that actually this one will be five by five, and this is three by three, just how we want it. And now in order to show you why I created a matte layer, I'm going to show iteration one again and change it to some different color. And then I'm going to select individual rotation and make an animation for the rotation from, I don't know, let's say 45 to 180 degrees. And what you're gonna see now is the problem that we have. So we can see, I'm actually gonna change the individual scale just for now, we can see the square of iteration two behind the first one. So for that, we're going to need this matte layer, 
right here. And uh, let's say I change the iteration to tracking mat mode to alpha inverted mat. Then it's almost how we want it. But actually the rotation is a bit offset. But this is actually a simple fix. So I'm going to select mat one, double hit U on the keyboard and going to go down to the rotation expression that we did before. And now what this does is it offsets the animation by a bit uh, by the index, uh, which for this layer is two and for the next it's three. But I can actually fake this layer having the index three, which would be the same one as iteration two. Uh, and for that, I just need to type in my a plus one behind the index, close the bracket and open the bracket before this layer. And now there we go. It's in the exact same position. And the same thing we're also actually going to do for the scale. So I'm gonna copy this uh, and paste it over right this. Okay, and now you can still see this little stroke outside. And in order to fix this, I'm just going to put a plus two in the end of this expression. So the size of the mat is always a bit bigger than uh, the size of our normal iterations because After Effects just has a weird way of uh, rendering edges that are the same size. All right, now if I were to duplicate these two layers, we have an almost working rig, but the problem is our mat layer, uh, yeah, it doesn't have any repeaters and also uh, our spacing slider is doing nothing yet. So I'm gonna command Z this twice and go back into iteration two, go down the repeaters, go down to transform, uh, which will be the spacing. And for this, we can option click the position and drag that pick whip to spacing. And now, yeah, it's kind of confusing. Uh, it's kind of diagonally um, making its way because it's using both X and Y axis for this expression. And this is an easy fix, just replace this second temp with zero. So the Y value always stays at zero. And I'm gonna copy the expression only and paste that expression down at the position of repeater two, but actually invert those two values to zero and temp, which is the variable it automatically creates and now we can change the spacing through our null object. Perfect. And now I'm gonna steal the repeaters that we created in this iteration too, uh, copy them and paste them into mat1. Okay, I'm gonna show mat1 just so we have it visible. And now we can see the problem because it has a different index. Of course, it now has two rep repetitions. So in order to change this, just go down the copies and type in minus one, easy. And for the offset, just change the plus 0.5 to plus one. And now I'm gonna select both of those, tap copy expression only, and paste them onto repeater two. And if I were to hide this layer again and duplicate it now, we actually have our working rig already, as you can see here. And the last step before I'm gonna go mad about duplicating all those layers are gonna be the colors, because I have a very handy trick of actually randomizing our colors in order to create a beautiful kind of, yeah, random color transition with each repetition, as I showed you in this example. I'm gonna hide my first iteration again because I don't need it right now. Uh, go down into second iteration, go down to contents, rectangle and fill. And we can actually make an expression for our color. Wow, that's so crazy. Yeah, well, but before just blindly typing in the expressions here, I'm gonna quickly explain you how colors work in After Effects. So they're built with four dimensions, uh, which are RGB, and the last one, uh, I don't know actually, but we won't need it. And uh, for white, the maximum amounts are one, 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 and the last one, one. Okay, so this will now be white. Uh, let's say I change the first one to zero. Uh, this will look blue because we take all the red value out of it. Uh, let's say this is 0 0.5 and this is 0 0.5. It's gonna have this nice blue color. 
So now there's a couple of ways to go about this. As we know, we can use our layer index as a systematically changing variable to change our color as well. And for that, we're going to use under random numbers, the seed random. Uh, we can set some kind of seed, which in our case will be our layer index. And for timeless, we will say true because then it will stay static and the colors will stay the same. If you want them to change all the time, of course, you can say false as well. Uh, so I'm just going to click it and for seed, I'm going to say index and this I'm just going to replace with true. All right. Uh, and in the next line, I'm going to determine between which values we can have randomness. So I'm going to type random uh, and into brackets, I'm going to put just to show you 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1, 1. All right. So if I duplicate this now, we get crazy different colors. And in order to stay in some kind of theme or some kind of palette like I did here, these kind of uh, reddish, yellowish um, pastel colors, I can change those values to something different. Like, for example, 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 1, and 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So the randomness can only happen between 0 0.5 and 1 in the yellow, and 0.5 and 1 in the uh, blue value, I guess. And if I duplicate this one a couple of times, oh man, it's so fun to just duplicate those layers. It's just so satisfying and see the colors change. Uh, there we can see the colors actually look quite nice. And you guessed right, these are the same numbers that I used for this composition that I created before. Um, and now we have pretty much a working rig. The only thing missing is our first iteration right here. But this one is not affected by our color expressions because we just created them now. Uh, so I'm actually going to uh, delete this iteration, which is going to ruin everything for a second because our indexes have shifted by one. But I'm going to duplicate iteration to drag it all the way to the top. And now we're good again. And now in our null object, we can set keyframes for all of those values. And uh, yeah, basically just play around with it. For the first animation, I'm going to let it scale up and at an easy ease by pressing F9. And as you can see, it's already working. And now we can try the same for our rotation, uh, which is right here. Okay. And set another keyframe and set it to 90 degrees, for example. And add easy ease. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, that's pretty dope. And now we can even animate this spacing. Um, I'm going to hit you on my keyboard to show those keyframes. And let's say the spacing increases when it's rotating uh, like this. Okay. And add easy ease. And now it looks somewhat like this. And now what's awesome is I can select all of those layers above the null object and parent them to the null object. And now I can even rotate it globally or scale it globally. And you can add iterations anytime that you want to. I can just duplicate this more and more and more and our grid will get bigger and bigger and bigger and it will still work. Then I just kept adding some keyframes and some easing inside the graph editor, changed the background colors, and last but not least, added this beautiful grain effect, which is actually extremely easy to make. And uh, you will find a quick tip on that grain effect on my Instagram uh, in a few days, probably. If there's anything new that you learned today, please let me know by leaving a like or commenting down below. And if you create something by watching my tutorials, please mention me on Instagram or Twitter, like Erin, for example, who shared this beautiful piece on her Instagram. I'd love to see what you guys create. So stay tuned, subscribe for more and peace.